Hi, it's David from Electric Teaching, and I'm going to show you how to do the trapezoid approximation of a function to get the integral. The integral being the area bounded by the function and the axis, in this case the x-axis. And so the big question here is, can we take the integral of log x cubed, log of x cubed dx, and in this case, we really cannot do algebra, at least for the Calculus one perspective. We cannot do algebra. The derivative of the inside, if I was to use u substitution, the derivative of the inside is not sitting on the outside. And this is the case for many integrals in, uh, in mathematics. So what you want to do is you want to realize that sometimes you need the trapezoid approximation. With technology these days, <clears throat> in the TI, it seems that we could easily get this answer with any kind of uh, um, technical tool, TI-83, etc., or TI-84, um, or even some online graphing tools that are out there. But to understand how they may have been programmed to get those answers, I'd like to do a lesson on how to use the trapezoid approximation here, and as well, I'd like to show you how to program your TI-83 to do approximate approximations of, of, of the integral here when you can't do it algebraically. So let's first take a look at something which I hope is review, the left endpoints. Just a quick little look at the left endpoint. The left endpoint, let's put this on a, um, on a definite integral. So let's say from 1 to 3 in this case. So from 1 to 3. So whatever this graph looks like between 1 and 3, we're going to try to get the area <clears throat> excuse me, between the curve and the x-axis. So on the left end approximation, you are instructed to get the delta x first, the delta x in this case is b minus a over n. And we haven't been told how many n's. Uh, later I'm going to keep that a variable, but for now let's look at it as n equal 4. n equal 4 means we're going to have four rectangles, four rectangles for this left end approximation. So you, the left end approximation, again, I hope this is somewhat review because I'm not trying to teach it, I'm trying to use it as a review moment here, is b minus a, or 3 minus 1, over n, which is 4, which tells us the width, the width, the delta x, the width of every one of the um, left end point rectangles that we're making that are for this curve. So just kind of a review here. Sorry if I'm jumping to the jumping through it a little too quickly and it's not review. Um, now we need to sum up the heights. That's how the left end approximation works, is you sum up the heights, and you would take and plug and chug an f of starting point one for the left end points, plus f of the next delta, the next delta over, and the next delta over you can see is 2 over 4, or is in this case 1 half, 1 half, and so then I would be plugging and chugging 1 and a half further, 1.5, because the next left end point is right there, and it's a half over from the starting point of 1. I hope that's making sense. You would continue on and you would end just shy, this is important, just shy of the last of the last one, because the last one of the four rectangles, you won't plug and chug this one until you get to the right end points. So you would plug and chug the 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, but not the 3 point, the end point. Right end, right end looks very similar. It's 1 half, but again 2 over 4 here, 1 half, f of not the starting point. We don't start with the left end. We start now one delta x over. So we're actually starting at 1.5. 1.5. So we would plug and chug a 1.5 into this function and then add it with the plug and chug of okay, the next half over 2 and then up to 2.5 and then the last one would be f of 3, the last end point. So that's what right end will look like. <clears throat> Let me show you what the trapezoid, trapezoid approximation will look like. So the trap approximation, the trap as I like to call it, okay, will be a, a, if you don't know the formula, the formula is an average of the heights. And a trapezoid, if you lay it on its side or, or if you lay it on its bottom or one of the bases, 
this is a typical trapezoid, you would take the average of these values to get the area. Well, the average has, an, well, in this case, would be a plus b over 2. So if you, the trapezoid formula has an extra half that is involved with all of the heights. So if you're wondering why the formula, the trapezoid formula, is b minus a over n, but with a 2, the 2 is being factored out of all of the heights, of all of the heights. Now the formula starts off on the left to get the, if I was to make this one rectangle here a trapezoid, to start on the left I would have a plug and chug of f of 1 here. But then for the second one, for the second one, I would be plugging and chugging, okay, the 1.5 to get the area of this trapezoid, but then I would use the second one again to get that trapezoid. So therefore, we're going to use the second plug and chug twice. Again, I'm kind of rushing through this to get to the TI-83 programming part, but I wanted to make sure that you understand the formula at least a little bit and get a quick review of the formula. So the formula has a doubling because of taking the average of all the trapezoids. I know these aren't trapezoids, but assuming these are trapezoids, we would have then an average of the heights to get each one of the trapezoids. So that means we plug and chug the left endpoint once, but all the other ones twice, all the middle ones twice. So it would be f of 2 plus, I'm going to continue on down here, okay, f uh, uh, 2, f of, let's see, what's the next one? I'm going to plug and chug f of 1, 1 and a half, 2, 2 and a half, so 2, 2 and a half, 2 of the plug and chugs of 2.5 and then only one, only one of the end point. So when I use this, let me kind of box out those with brackets. When I use this formula, the trapezoid formula, these are these heights, very similar to the sum of the heights on the left and in the right hands, are averages of the heights for all of the triangle, for all of the trapezoids, excuse me. And therefore, when you look at it, it's these two divided by two, and then these two divided by two, and then those two divided by two. That's why there's this extra two on the outside. They've factored out the two. If I was to finish this, I would take the calculator out and actually calculate. The outside here would be one-fourth. That's basically an extra two multiplier on the denominator of delta x. And then I would plug in log of one cubed. 1 cubed plus log of two, 2, excuse me, 2 of the logs of uh, 1.5 cubed, 1.5 cubed plus, continuing on, 2 of the logs of 2 cubed, 2 cubed plus 2 of the logs, it's supposed to be a plus here, sorry, plus 2 of the logs, oh, that's why it's plus 2, that's supposed to be a 2, I'm sorry little mess up there. Let me fix that real quick. So then that is supposed to be 2 right there. Get that fixed. Okay, and so, oops, got the wrong pin here selected, sorry. So there's 2 of those, and then finally, oh no, 2 of the 2.5s, 2 of the log of 2.5 cubed, okay, and finally, scroll down here a little bit, one more of the single log of the endpoint 3 cubed. <clears throat> then we take out a calculator and get this approximation. Well, doing all this calculator work over and over again makes me feel like we should have a program do it for us, especially if you're going to change the amount of n's you're going to use each time. You might want to use this as a kind of a numerical limit um, analysis of seeing what the limit of the area is by doing numerical analysis by increasing the n. That's often the case in some math classes, some calculus classes. So I'm thinking that if we wrote a program that actually did this for us, that would be a more efficient way of calculating for many different ends so we can watch the area converge, converge onto the actual exact area that we're looking for. I hope that makes a little sense there. So let's pull out our TI graphing calculator. Um, <clears throat> 
I'm going to use the TI-83, that's just the emulator I have here. Uh, this will work on the TI-84s and such too as well. Just got to, uh, it'll be some small differences that I hope you'll get, um, you'll be able to handle. I'll try to um, explain what you might be seeing on the screen that'll look a little different than the, the older TI-83 model. First, I want to just show you how to use the sum sequence to get something like the left-end approximation or the right-end approximation. So let's take a, a closer look at maybe this right-end approximation. Let's take a closer look at this sum of a sequence of this function and see if I can actually calculate this with the sum sequence trick. So what I want to do is I want to use the sum sequence functions inside of here to add up this sequence. That's what a sum of a sequence is. Sequences are comma separated values. A sum is when you add them up. It's like epsilon stuff. So to do this, you go to second stat button. That's the list. You're going to go over first twice to the math to start off with the parenthesis function sum with the function that starts off sum parenthesis here. <clears throat> then you want to go back to the list, second stat button, one over for the operations of sequence. So we're going to sum up a sequence. Once you get to this point, if you're on a TI-84, it may switch screens right here. And the five elements I'm going to be putting in are, is the five elements that you'll put in the little windows that you may see on the TI-84. So I just want to give some help in case you're on a, on a newer model. Now, the, there's five things we put in for a sequence. We have to give it the function name. So the function name is log x caret 3, x cubed. And then I'm going to put a comma down. Okay, so that's the first element of this entry, the first value, I should say. The second value tells what variable to be using for the incrementing. We're going to be using x as the variable we're incrementing. This is done because in case you have multiple variables up here in your formula. Comma, the third value tells us where we start, where we start. Oops, got an extra comma in there. The third value tells us where we start. So I'm going to put in a starting point of 1 comma, I'm now going to tell it where it ends. Well, for right in, oh, excuse me, for right in, I should start at 1.5. Let me switch that to 1.5. Get that back on the screen there. Okay, and then comma, we end at 3. We end at 3. So you got to be careful here. It's not just 1 to 3 every time with left end and right ends. You got to be, you have to think about where you're starting and where you're ending based on the heights of these rectangles based on the plugs that you put in of the x values. The delta is 0.5. The delta is 0.5. So I have five elements. The, the, vari uh, excuse me, the function, the x variable, telling it to increment x, starts at 1.5. So the first plug and chug is 1.5. The last plug and chug is 3. And it'll jump by 0.5s all the way through. I'm going to close parentheses twice and hit enter. Now, I have to still multiply by our delta x, so the right end approximation for four rectangles, for four rectangles, is this answer divided by four, oops, no, divided by two, excuse me, divided by two, the delta x, so we're multiplying by 0.5, the delta x. So I get an, an approximation of, my right end approximation is about, let me see that value again, 2.03. We're just going to round it to 2.03 here. So the area between the function and the x-axis from 1 to 3 is approximately 2.03 by the right end sum. I'm going to show you a nifty calculator trick here in case you don't know it. I'm going to do second enter once. That brings us back to that previous one. Second, enter again, takes me back to the original sum sequence, so I don't have to type it up again. And now I'm going to do the left end approximation by just changing this to be starting at 1, but ending at 2.5. So I'm going to switch the 3 there to a 2, and then I'm going to go second, insert, that's the insert right there, and put in uh, 2.5, so that I'm running from 1 all the way out to 2.5. And I didn't finish it in my little example. I was hoping you understood the left end and right end points at least a little bit here. So now this will be the left end approximation. I'm just going to hit enter. Don't forget I have to divide by 2 or multiply by half as well. And my approximation for the left end here is 1. Point, what was that? 1.31. We'll just round it to 
3, 1. So the trapezoid formula, if you look carefully, the trapezoid formula is when we actually take the, this left hand sum, which starts at f of 1 and has f of, f of 1.5, for example, and we add it to the right in height sums and divide by 2. In other words, we take an average of these heights, which is based on how the formula originally worked anyways. So we can use the left in and right in approximations or height sums to help us program the trap formula, to help us program the trap formula. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and I think I'm going to wrap up this video because I don't want this video to be a 20 minute video. I'm going to do this in two parts, okay? So you got a quick little example of what teachers would expect you to do before grabbing the calculator and putting this on paper of what the plug, as I tell my students, look like. And then you'd be expected to grab a calculator and chug it out. I also went over how to use the sum sequence button for left in and right ends. So in the next video, I'm going to actually use the program button here, and we're going to actually write a program that'll kick out all of our sums, our left in, our right in, our traps, and if you want, you can easily add the midpoint and Simpsons rule as well. I'm just going to focus on left in, right in, and trap for now. I'm David from Electric Teaching, and I hope this first part of this lesson has made sense, and I hope that I've helped a little bit. Stay tuned for part two, where we'll actually program the calculator to do the trap and the left and the right end, and we'll base it off of any ends we want. So we can run this with four ends, or 40 ends, or 400 ends, and see how the numbers will converge onto the real answer. I'm David from Electric Teaching. Thank you for listening.